Ruto is still the deputy president and the president Uhuru Kenyatta. A whole 10 years as deputy president. If he wanted us to believe the ridicule he tried to uh, bestow on President Uhuru Kenyatta yesterday, he could have started by saying, I had to resign. I had to resign when the situation became unbearable. That is the most natural thing for a leader who wants to be held accountable for their principles. Indeed, the acts of omissions or commission. Therefore, it must be seen by Kenyans that this is a continuation of uh, what Pre President William Ruto and President Uru Kenyatta started in 2013. That I thought was important for the avoidance of doubt. And if I was president, if President William Ruto, I would also probably advise him. We are all the same people. Advise him to show a measure of respect to a gentleman who has constitutionally handed over power. I keep on saying this is a very rare occurrence and makes us proud as Kenyans that we respect our institutions to that level. And certainly President Oro Kenyatta deserves congratulations for a peaceful um, handover of, of power. And in fact, Kenyans generally. Remember there were advisories to foreigners in this country saying you should not visit Kisumu, you should not visit elsewhere for fear that there will be uh, Kenyans who take to the streets. Now Kenyans have baffled the world and we owe it to them to congratulate them for keeping the peace although they are so pained, they are so deeply pained and they took it. The seven million of them, because the country ad <laughs> admittedly has been divided right in the middle and some of that div dividing is by Mamluks from Venezuela that we know that this is what happened. Therefore, our people have demonstrated to the world that all they're interested in is justice. They're not just stone throwers or people abuse each other. They have demonstrated their true sense of Kenyan nationalism. My dear Kenyans, the first campaign promise by the Ruto administration was to the lowering of the cost of living. From day one, all costs associated with basic living have gone up. The price of unga and the cost of electricity are beyond the ordinary Mwananchi's reach. These are matters we feel should take preeminence in these early days. Just like there was the rush to subsidize fertilizer on the 19th of September 2022, the same urgency should have first and foremost been applied to the rapidly rising cost of living. Only yesterday, as President William Ruto was opening Parliament, <laughs> Central Bank, on their part, were raising the base lending rate from 7.25 to 8.25 or thereabouts. What does that tell you? The cost of borrowing will now go up. It is a middle class in this country and the hard-working business people who have made this country move towards uh, Vision 20, that objectives of a middle-income country. But now if we kill that spirit by Kenyans not being able to borrow, I think that the consequences will, will be amazing in a negative sense. Now, we also question how this fertilizer was procured when it was procured and where it was sourced from. We ask, does it meet the Kenya Bureau uh, of Standards, uh, standards, KEBS standards? This administration must therefore make public, because one thing we have done as a country is to open up this country. And the basic rights of Kenyans, the right to life, there's not one, one thing that nobody can take away from Kenyans, is the basic rights. Therefore, the right to know is important. This administration, therefore, uh, should make public the procurement process of this fertilizer subsidy. We have directed our MPs, a lot of whom, as you can see, at very short notice, managed to come to the command center. We have directed our MPs to commence an inquiry into the same. Fellow countrymen, as you are well aware, the extremely high cost of fuel in Kenya affects all sectors of our economy, 
from production costs that makes us unattractive to investors and our local manufacturing to transport costs that inevitably makes life unbearable with the expensive basic cost of goods and services. This is happening at a time when the global price of a barrel of oil is on the decline, down from US dollars 20 per barrel, 80 per barrel, from a high of US dollars 120. We therefore expect this administration to honor their campaign promise of lowering fuel prices and in addition revise the punitive tax levies on the cost of fuel. The Ruto administration, administration's initiative of utilizing savings for development instead of borrowing is another camouflage promissory note to realize the 300 billion shillings from this year's budget is extremely ambitious. We wish to propose austerity measures such as the restructuring of the national debt and the recovering of public funds looted from 2013 to date. On the 27th September, the Ruta administration availed their choices of cabinet secretaries. Of the total number, only seven women were named, contrary to the campaign promise of a 50-50 cabinet. I hear there was an MOU to, to name from the clergy, members of the clergy, a CS for Religious Affairs could be another breach <laughs> of an MOU. Moreover, the selection of cabinet secretaries, some of whom have amazingly, amazingly active criminal cases, is unquestionable. What are you asking our parliamentarians to do? Honestly, to go into the committees, compromise them with money here and money here, and actually approve people with criminal cases. If I was William Ruta, I would withdraw some of this immediately to avoid national shame and even international shame. This was not procedurally done on the basis of competencies and personal integrity. We shall direct our MPs to withhold approval of those who do not meet the chapter six threshold of our constitution. Finally, dear Kenyans, and leaders assembled here, and you members of the fourth estate. On the back of this heavily contested election, the deficiencies that exist within the judicial and electoral systems need to be immediately addressed. We must reform, and I cannot overemphasize the word must, in the light of what we now know. We must reform the Independent Electron Boundaries Commission, IEBC, to be able to, per chance, going forward, guarantee our children free, fair, and credible elections. With regards to the judiciary, there can never be justice if our judicial system can be adversely influenced to subvert the rule of law and the course of justice. As I speak, I speak a member. As I, I speak, I'm a member of that fraternity. And it pains me as senior counsel to have witnessed what we have gone through. In conclusion, our transformative ideals live on as Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Alliance. We are re energized, we are revitalized, and indeed rejuvenated to ensure that the hopes and aspirations of the Kenyan people will be at the top of our agenda. Aluta continua. I am accompanied here by members of parliament, as I said, in excess of 20 who came in quickly.